of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Jim Cordwright, former marshal of Fort Worth, Texas, and a deadly man with a six gun. In the 80s, he organized one of the country's first extortion protection rackets and inaugurated a reign of violence and terror in the Lone Star State. The Schaefer Ranch, five miles south of Fort Worth. You in charge here? Yeah. I wasn't expecting shipment until tomorrow. Are you Mr. Schaefer? That's right. Well, my name's Elston. They shipped us through so fast, I didn't have a chance to notify you. That's all right. I'll have my men here in half an hour to take over. Good. I've got shipping papers for you, Mr. Schaefer. I'll get them. Schaefer? Jim Courtright. Oh, no, no, put that thing away, Schaefer. You don't know how to handle a gun. What do you want? Well, Huck here tells me you're not going to let the agency protect your herd anymore. That's right. Huh. Well, I think you're making a mistake. But without my organization behind you, you'll be at the mercy of every rustler in Texas. When Lawson refused to pay you, it wasn't rustlers burnt down his barn. Those were your men. Well, if that's what you think, maybe you ought to go see your new marshal, Tom Johnson. That'd be a real waste of time. I'm writing Governor Ross and having you thrown out of the state. Now clear out, I've got work to do. Well, that's the way you feel. Well, you haven't lost a touch, Jim. Southwest Railroad a long time. An hour after news of his murder reached headquarters, I was on my way to Fort Worth. I'm Matt Clark, detective for the same. I arrived two days later on February the 7th, 1887, and following usual procedure, checked in at the city marshal's office. Marshal Johnson? Yeah. What can I do for you? My name's Clark. Railroad detective, eh? That's right. Well, have a cigar. No, thanks. Nothing wrong with it. They make them crooked on purpose. <laughs> I know, but I don't smoke. Oh. Well, I reckon you hear about that shooting the other day, eh? That's right. I've got the general picture, but I'd appreciate it if you'd fill in the details for me. I don't know much more about it than you do. Nobody's seen it happen. What about the train crew? Oh, those cattle were making so much noise, they didn't even hear the shots. What about Schaefer? Has he got any enemies that you know about? No, not that I know of. Well, in other words, this whole thing to you is a complete mystery. I've got men working on the case, Clark, but this sort of thing takes time. Yeah, yeah I can understand that. Now, you don't mind if I stick around and sort of speed things up a little bit, do you? Not at all, Clark. Go right ahead. Well, thanks. Johnson was either the laziest lawman on record or he was as crooked as the cigars he smoked. I decided to see an old friend of mine, Luke Short. He ran the White Elephant, the best saloon in town.
detective has to be prepared for anything, such as seeing my partner, Margaret Jones, tending bar in the White Elephant. Hey, mister, what do you have? What are you doing here? Same as you. I was in Dallas when Elston was killed. That's why I got here before you. Oh, what are you doing behind the bar? Well, Luke thought a lady bartender might be good for business. It's the craziest thing I ever heard of. Luke in his office? No, he went to the bank. I think I know who killed Elston and Schaefer. Yeah? Everybody thinks it's Courtright, but they're scared to say it. Jim Courtright? The fast draw kid himself. The whole town's scared to death of him. Used to be Marshall this town, didn't he? That was four years ago. Now he's running some sort of a blackmail protection racket. I bet's why Schaefer was killed. It wouldn't pay off. Could be. Elston just happened to get in the way when the shooting started. Where's Court right now? I don't look now, but he just came in. Yeah? Hey, Josie. Yes, Mr. Courtright. Come here a minute. What do you have, Mr. Courtright? Well, when I came in, you were talking to that fellow at the end of the bar. No? No. Did you ask any questions? Sure, but I gave him the same answer I gave you last night. It's not what I meant. Did you say anything about working for the railroad? No. Why? Never mind. Ha <laughs> ha, Luke Short, you old goat. You, you right. hi-hat son of a gun. You were gonna pass me by without saying hello. <laughs> well, you're mighty easy to overlook, little fella. Oh, don't give me that, you big ox. Come on in the office. We got lots to talk over. It's all right if I go back to work now, Mr. Corkwright? What? Oh, sure, go ahead. Hold on, no, wait a minute. That stranger make a play for you? Well, sure, but they all try at least once. Maybe you could encourage him a little, huh? Why? Hmm. I'd like to know what he's doing for you. Maybe you can find out. What's in it for me? Hundred. You got yourself a deal, Mr. Courtright. Hey, bartender. Look, I only gave Jonesy that job to keep out of trouble till you got here. If you got any sense, you'll take and clear out, both of you. Look, we came here to do a job. Why do you be wasting your time? Courtright has got this town sewed up tight in the drum. What's the matter? Are you afraid of him? You know better than that. Then why are you paying him off? Who said I was? You are, aren't you? Look, I'm doing all right here in Fort Worth. I got the white elephant, and I got a freight line. Now, that's not doing bad either. So why should I ask for trouble? Look, it only takes one man. One man with enough guts to stand at the court right, and he's out of business. There are plenty of others paying. Ask one of them. Maybe they got wives and kids. Look, man, this joint's a gold mine. If somebody set fire to it, I'd lose everything. All right. Suppose instead of paying off court right, some of the men put up the same amount of money in sort of an insurance form to guarantee you against any loss. I'm not interested. You're an example of what money can do to man, and I'm glad I don't have much of it. Now take it easy, Matt. Why should I? Matt? Yeah? Oh, I have a showdown with court right. That don't prove he killed your man. I know that. Once he's jailed for extortion, somebody might come forth with some evidence. I think your neck for putting me on such a spot. Well, I'll do it. I figured you would. Yeah, I know. Now, how do we work this? Just give me the names of men that are paying off court right. I'll take it from there. afternoon, I made the rounds. It didn't take long to find out that Courtright was playing for high stakes. Using his reputation as a gunslinger, he was collecting tribute from every businessman and rancher in the county, and they were tired of it. Hey, man. How'd it go? Ah, great. 
Every man on the list agrees to back you 100%. Oh, that's wonderful. 38,000. This place is only worth eight. You mean they pledge that much? That's right. In a year's time, they'd pay court right twice that amount. And don't forget, Luke, they may not have to put out one thin dime. That is, if we're lucky. We're not trusting the luck, Jonesy. Some of the fellows are sending men over here to guard this place. We may need it. We're ready for court, right? The sooner he knows about it, the better. Say, by the way, didn't you say you made a deal with court, right? That's right. All right. You get over there as quick as you can and see what you can do about it. Now, Luke, here's what happened. Uh, come in. Well, hello, Jonesy. Hello, Mr. Cordright. Uh, you wanted some information about a certain man. I've got it. Oh, such as? He works for the railroad. He's a detective, and his name is Matt Clark. Oh, I knew that. Well, I'll tell you something you didn't know. Luke isn't going to pay you to protect his place anymore. Where'd you hear that, Jonesy? Mm -hmm. The walls in that joint are so thin, you can learn a lot if you just keep your ears open. That Detective Matt Clark tell you? No, but he's in on the deal. Uh -huh. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Cordright. I guess I better be getting back now. Well, uh, there's more where that came from, in case you hear anything else. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Cortright. You, uh, not gonna let him get away with it, are you, Jim? Oh, no. If I did, other people might get the same idea. Yeah. Well, what do we do? Shoot the joint up or burn it down? Uh, Luke and Clark aren't fools. They'll be expecting something like that. That freight line on Luke's. This is Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. As a wagon train up from the north doing today. Uh-huh. See what you mean. Round up the men and ride out to meet it. You coming along? No, I'm staying here in case I need an alibi. All right. There they are. Let's go. Train. It's been wiped out. What happened? Bendis hit us at Green Springs. It happened so fast, we didn't have a chance. Anyone hurt? Dad Wilson's dad. Dad Wilson? Nate, Smitty, and Joe are hit pretty bad, too. We patched up a wagon, and they're bringing them in. Now, what do you think you're doing? I'll have a better chance against Claude right with his shoulder rig. You crazy fool, that's just what he wants you to do. Then that's what he's gonna get. You're staying right here. You're no match for court, right? You started this, but I'm gonna finish it. No, not this way. No. Now sit. If you go gunning for court, right, he'll trick you into drawing first and then blow your brains out. And he'll claim self-defense. Is this a private fight or can a lady join in? Crazy fool wants to go gunning for court, right? That's a nice way to commit suicide. What do you expect me to do? Stay hold here and wait for him to try something else? That's exactly it. Why don't we prove that Courtwright's men attacked the wagon train? After all, I'm practically on his payroll. So? He's probably feeling very pleased with himself. If I went over there, he might even do a little boasting. 
Hey, that's not a bad idea. You think you can handle him? Positive. However, if I'm not back in a half hour, come and get me. for me? Yes. Clark and Luke claim your men wrecked the freight line. Oh, uh, people claim lots of things they can't prove. They also say you're going to shoot up the white elephant. Huh? You believe them? Enough to quit my job. What's the matter? Are you afraid you might get hurt? That was one reason. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, what's the other? I found out life was more pleasant when you're on the winning side. Well, I didn't quit my job as marshal of Fort Worth to be a loser. But how long do you think you can be a winner, Mr. Courtright? Oh, just as long as I can outshoot anyone that gets in my way. That'll be just about long enough to collect enough money to get to Chicago and New York. The big time. You know, I like you, Jonesy. I'm glad you do. Yeah, I like you a lot. Beautiful hair, lovely skin, soft lips. There's only one thing wrong. Oh? You're a railroad detective. You see, I had Marshal Johnson telegraph for information about Clark. And you know what? We learned that he works with a female detective named Margaret Jones. Well, you have to admit, it was fun while it lasted. April, break your arm! What's going on? This female detective's gonna come in real handy. I don't like this. If you ask me. Nobody asked you. All right, Huck. Take it to Pioneer Grove and wait till you hear from me. It'll be a pleasure. Come on. Oh. What are you gonna do with her, Jim? I'm gonna use her for bait. When that detective Clark finds out she's missing, he'll have the whole county looking for her. Oh, that'll give me enough time to take care of Luke Short. Now. You'll be the first one Clark will get in touch with. Of course I will. What'll I tell him? Well, you tell him you haven't seen me all day, huh? No sign of Jonesy yet? Not yet. What time is it? Almost 4 o'clock. Something must have gone wrong. I don't think I'll wait. Jonesy will never forgive you if you barge in and ruin everything. He'll get over it. Right. I don't know. I haven't seen him all morning. Anything wrong? There's a girl missing, and I think he knows where she is. Well, I'll be doggone. Who is she? Margaret Jones. She worked for Luke Short. Oh, yes. Cute trick, too. And Jim liked her a lot. Huh. Why, that low down? Where do you think he took her? Well, now, let's see. I know he's got a shack up at Madden's Lake. Uh, yes, sir. Is that what Courtright told you to tell me? Now, look here, son. Don't you lie to me, Johnson. I found this cigar just a few minutes ago on Courtright's desk. I must have left it there this morning. I, I thought you said you hadn't seen him all morning. Well, I, I must have. He left there less than an hour ago. The butt in that cigar is still wet. Now, you tell me where he really took her. I'll break you in two. Did he take her to the lake? No. No. His men are there waiting for you. He really took her to Pioneer Grove. Go 
Lord Rice got Jones at a place called Pioneer Grove. I want some men to go with me. Come on. against court right. Hold your fire, man. seems to be doing all right. Oh, you don't sound very sure of yourself. What, what are you afraid of, Luke? I'm not afraid of you, if that's what you're getting at. Oh, you're lying, little man. You haven't got nerve enough. <laughs> Courtright's reign of violence had ended. He finally found somebody to stand up to him and call his bluff. What is it? Something the folks in town wanted you to have, Luke. They're grateful for what you did, Luke, even though they can't understand how you managed to do it. Courtright's guns. Might I? I sure don't know how to thank you. You're mighty nice. Here's something else. These weapons belong to Jim Courtright, who was killed by Luke Short, February the 8th, 1887. Luke wasn't half the shot Jim was, but he was twice the man. That's what the whole town thinks about you, little man. You well deserved it. Gosh, I, I'm speechless. I, I don't know what to say. I... Oh, forget it, Luke. Just drop us a line sometime, won't you? Come on, Jonesy, we must have trained. Goodbye, Luke. Bye, Jonesy. Take it easy. Big man. <laughs> <laughs> 